Hey, everybody, welcome back. I'm Emily Moyer, and Sonia Barrett is with me for number 11. We're at the master number, Sonia. Number 11 in our series on the human game, and this one will be the real smart grid. And uh, some every time we do a show together, it comes about in a different way. But sometimes, including this time, Sonia will send me something and say, let's talk about this. And I'll think, oh, she has some new work. And it's like some article she wrote 250 years ago. <laughs> she just pulled it back up from her Oracle crystal ball prophecy machine. <laughs> it seems that maybe Sonia is the one doing all of this because she seems to know about it long before we all did. It's right? my reality. Yeah. Okay. Um, but she had written an article about, you know, sort of the, she called it cyclic engineering and, you know, sort of this possibility of stepping mm -hmm. off Stepping offline, my kick, my cat just broke through the door there. Yeah, Stepping, she's excited to see you, Sonia. Apparently, because <laughs> she, she knows that's why she, she totally knows. But your article kind of covers this sort of, you know, like this sort of induction that we're all experiencing, you know, sort of into this quote unquote like mm, mechanized smart grid, or you know, you can sort of step outside of that and sort of identify your place in the more natural sort of true smart grid of things. And then there's kind of this space in between. So I kind of wanted to do, you know, a conversation about sort of the various levels and the various possibilities sort of during this time. And I think we're all really aware of um, the paranoid aspect of the smart grid reality right now. And while that is a very real thing, it often overshadows something that is really far more powerful than that, because that is the inversion, it is the fake. And the thing that it is imitating is, you know, our sort of natural way of being and whatnot. So I wanted to have you back to talk about it and continue our, our game here. So it's been a little while. How are you, Sonia? I'm great. I'm good. I'm good. Good to be good. back. Yep. yep. Good. It's, been, it's been a while, a couple, three or four months, something like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a little while. Yeah. A little bit. So anything interesting going on in the Sonia Barrett world or should we jump right into it? We can uh, probably jump right into it because I have a I have a lot of very interesting going interesting things going on in my game. Uh, not you know some of it obviously can't really talk about it, but you know the game is good. It's you know it's it's great in the middle of all of this. My game is actually quite great, um, which maybe I guess we're going to talk about some of that because it is about stabilizing or. Uh, creating your own or constructing your own uh game in the game you know it's your yeah. game in the game in the game and uh and so that's that's kind of what i'm doing where i am i'm i'm building my 2021 and my 2022 i'm building building my game um as it will un unfold into into those cycles coming up so you're really like one of the only sort of like we've heard a lot of interesting people in alternative media like um jose arguez who i think you mentioned in your article and then like ian xl lungold who i used to love to listen to like they used to talk about cycles of time in terms of calendars and you give nod to that in your article but you're really the only person sort of in the modern iteration of whatever this is that we are the alternative media the consciousness community whatever the heck this is the insane sane asylum who really talks about like the, the cycle the, the cycles of the body and the cycles of the mind and the natural cycles and how that all sort of plays into this other stuff we have thrown at us right and so like it, the title of the article was cyclic engineering how did you kind of figure out how important these cycles are both in uh, manipulating in us, but it also in us figuring out how to sort of free ourselves from the game that's afoot. Or when I say free ourselves, I don't mean stop playing the game, but stop right, right. the game played on us, right? Start playing back. Okay. Um, good question. Uh, some of this, you know, some of these things when I say good question, because sometimes it's been a while since, since my mindset changed. And when it shifted, so then I have to really think about it. But yeah, the, the, I think the article was cyclic engineering going offline in the game. And um, and so I think for me, I'm gonna use the word time. Over time, I started to become more aware of the cycles in general. And um, you know, what, what 
networked us into this into this system. I think that's really where it started to really examine the fact that we are uh, part of a network. And when you start to recognize that whole network system, all these other aspects start to um, to show up the cyclic value. Uh, let's let's do the thing that everybody knows because we've talked about it a million times. But I think the idea of uh, people's age, I, I, I wondered what happened, you know, what, how does our body know to do what it does? Like, you know, go through puberty, you know, start puberty um, or shut off puberty. It really kind of started there with really looking at it. It's like, well, how does my body, how does our body know how to do these things? And of course you realize over, over a period of time that it's, so, it's networked into the cycles. The cycle, something is counting you, something is counting, when I say something is counting you, we've talked about it before, something is counting the number of cycles or your number of rotations there then, the number of um, pattern, patterns that equate to a cycle. Now that's the 365 days. Now it doesn't matter. I'm always having to make this emphasis because there's forever people out there that just don't get it. And then they'll go, well, the calendar is wrong. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter whether the calendar is wrong or not. You, are you aging? Okay, then you are part of some sort of cycle and something is counting you down. So that to me became really significant as to seeing how, how this is happening. Because as the cycles are moving, uh, 12, 13, well, for a girl, typically around 13 years old, sometimes earlier, but 13 seemed to have been like more the magic number in terms of starting her menstrual cycle or, um, you know, for boys, this, this puberty change over seemed to be happening based on a certain number of cycles. So that right there tells you that there is something about this cyclic process that your body is is wired into and it's alerted after so many cycles also based on um genetic information also based on ancestral um information bloodline information you know the women in in that family how soon did they start their cycles so you start to get a better picture of this this map this cycle process that's going on now um Going even uh, further past that, you start to I started to ask the question, well, you know, if if these cycles were they really set in stone, or was my body, were our bodies responding automatically to these cycles based on what we've talked about before, some sort of a default program? Well, that's what I started to realize. So the cycles became significant more so based on a default system in place that we are networked into. And that means that it, these things are happening to some degree automatically. You can try to delay it. You can try to delay aging. You can try to delay, well, I'm gonna say aging because that's the big thing because that's that's the checkout. It's like, okay, you come in, you start to age um, and then eventually people check out. So. You know, so so starting to look at that whole process and and realizing that everything that we're dealing with are nothing but um, a, a programs, a cycle, cycles. These cycles are programs too. They are a um, part of a blueprint of how our world, our reality, then as we know it, how it works, how it runs. But more importantly for me was recognizing that that all these cycles were more a default system that was automatic and happening and uh they were just based on various cycles and how the body fits in on a bigger scale also of um um the cycles of when you know when you get to a certain age and people start to uh, look older, get older. How does that work? You know, you know. It's anyway. It's 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 more intricate, but you get the basic idea. So that's where for some people, okay. So then astrology comes in, or astronomy comes in, um, and we are very tied to either astrology or we're very tied to 
uh, astronomy in the sense of what we think we see with the system in place, meaning the cyclic process of, of the universe, uh, of everything in the universe. For me, I figured out that it was just all just a series of programs, one embedded in the other, that were based on a specific blueprint as to how the version of reality that we're running as to how it works. And, uh, and we were responding to the network based on the fact that we were sort of wired or programmed for a specific version of reality. Not that that's the final version, but that is what we're working with. Any version of reality that we're running, our brains are mapped, we're, we're mapped for, that is, we, res we then respond to um, the, the default construct until we come into an awareness and then we start to move off of the default system. So, it, so no matter what we do, it comes back to that. And in our lives right now, in our time right now, yes, there is a default reaction happening because we've hit so many cycles um, in this version of reality. And so we are, um, we're seeing these changes that are going on, this, this absolute what appears to be chaos going on, a division, you've got division of people, division of those who are waking up on this level and those who are waking up on this level and those who are waking up on this level. So there's, there's different levels of it. And those that have said, absolutely not, I will exit. I, I have no plans to do anything uh, more because let's face it, it requires a lot of work. It requires a lot of work to do other than what the system dictates right now, the cycles that are, are happening right now. So I will kind of leave it right there and I hope, and then we can go into it further, but I hope that that was clear enough, at least up until this point, And I didn't confuse anybody uh, any further, but this is- <laughs> yeah. All right, so you already actually gave me a lot of interesting stuff to work with and some questions to ask, because sometimes I find like, for those who may still be a little bit confused or just need a few minutes to sort of settle into this, that like the analogies and the metaphors often really help, right? Mm -hmm. So very much like the way our cell phones work, you have a network, you have the T-Mobile network, right? And you go to the T-Mobile the shop and the network is always there, it's doing its thing. And the moment that you go to a T-Mobile shop and buy a cell phone and get one of their SIM cards in it, you are a, a, a node in their network and the phone comes and it's set on default mode, right? right. Which, you know, in this particular case, usually is like they have it set up for maximum surveillance and tracking and all of that kind of stuff, right? And although we should theoretically own our phones completely, if we paid for them, it doesn't necessarily happen that way. But well, nothing. We don't own anything. Houses. I mean, you know, land. Uh, none of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. See, I, that theor I, I think I practiced it with theoretically, right? So. <laughs> We're basically just right, like it's all it's all an illusion, the illusion of, of ownership, the illusion of polarity, the illusion of, you know, whatever, all these options, right? So, but you, you have a number of things, a number of programs on the phone that if you can take out of default mode and either set them to a few other options that come with, or even in some cases, you can create your own setting for certain things. Right. And then, you know, while that puts you into a different kind of cycle, it is not the default mode. And some people go to the extent of knowing how to do like a kernel break, a kernel break or a jailbreak on their phone so that they kind of are taken out of a lot of the systems, right? But is this sort of like a good analogy of what you're talking about? The system exists. As soon as you are alive, you're sort of locked in in a certain, in a certain way. And then until you have that moment of being clear that that's how it works, you that once you have that moment, you can then start either choosing to make adjustments based on having done research or deciding you'd like something else for yourself, or you can choose to just go along with the program and be plugged into the network in the way that has been designed for you. Right. I, yeah, I think I think that that's um, a good analogy. I think that works because, um, again, our systems here, all of the systems here, um, as I've always said, whether it be corporate systems or the techno technological systems, as you've just described, they're all um, emulating or replicating the bigger construct, the bigger system that we are part of, the way we are 
wired into it, the way our brains are, are, you know, networked into something much more expansive. Everybody will agree, oh yeah, we're definitely part of a bigger, uh, you know, picture. It's this massive technology that creation really is. And so we, all we do is we create a smaller versions, mm -hmm. different levels of smaller versions of the thing that is bigger. And that's why the article talked about, you know, like the real smart grid, you know, because the, the smart grid is about networking um, different aspects of technology together, you know, like your washing machine and your, yeah. your refrigerator and this and that, and everything is just all part of this massive network. It's all hooked up to that network, which means everything is hackable. Everything can really be truthfully um, hacked because it's all online. Well, we're all online, just a, a, um, a level of online that we can't really, there's no words to describe it other than when I mention the various cycles. This is how we're mapped in because we are part of the various cycles. And if you think about it, we would have to be networked into a system. That is the only way that our bodies can go through these cycles and know what to do like puberty. It knows it's time to turn the, the uh, activate then this body for what? for reproduction that's really what that why that happens and that's really about um nature or the system then um ensuring that the replication continues like we continue to fill the the planet with people that's mm -hmm. really if if we take everything out of this emotional state we're so emotional about you know everything like oh you know with kids or we want to have kids or not have who cares I'm just talking about the, the, the engineering of the system. What you choose to do is what you choose to do. But the system is designed to, um, to ensure that it continues to exist. And the only way that that can work is if there are entities in it, because entities are the ones through which the experiences will occur. Um, and that includes animals, all levels of animal, the human animal, everything. So we need all of these um, uh, programs, the human program, the human being program, the animal program, the plant program, all of those thing, these things are, are necessary to um, as part of this construct. So that means everything is taking in, breathing in life, everything is receiving, um, you know, uh, some sort of electromagnetic um, force energy, everything is emitting um, some sort of electromagnetic field. So everything is hooked up to greater systems. You know, we're hooked up to this system and then the system goes even more and more into the infinite, invisible, where you can't make any connections with what that is. So I, again, I hope that that starts to make a bit more sense. Unlike here, there, this becomes more finite systems like um, AT&T or something like that. They have a network. Okay, but there is some finiteness to what their networks can do, right? Uh, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they can only do so much. And so right now what we're having, which is why people are up in arms, once again, I'm going to mention that magic word, is that 5G. Um, I was going to love 5G. Uh, I know. <laughs> I, can't, I can't help it. I got to bring in 5G because the system is trying to expand itself. The system in this smaller system, I'm not necessarily just talking about the big nature major system, right? That's all still, um, um, everything here is a reaction of the system needing to continue to express and experience. So when, when we get up in arms about this technology, the 5G and the 10G that will come and all of that, we must keep understanding what is happening. The human being is designed to push the envelope. It, it, it is what we do. We will push the envelope. You might not be here for the envelope that will get pushed in 20 years, because if we knew what was coming in 20 or 50 years, we'd be freaking out. We're freaking out about the stuff now. We freak out. It's like, oh, no, we can't do that. Yeah, it will. Whatever you can think of, it will be done. 
will be done, has been done, is happening, past, present, future, all is happening. So I think for me, I don't get that same kind of panic that people do. I, I just don't get that because I realize that the fear aspect is just all part of the game right now. It's part of this right now. And you have an opportunity to engage in that and to experience all that will come from, from that specific experience. But since my mind is off on something that is beyond that, it's like, that that's just like minuscule to me. It's just minuscule. My mind is off on something else because I know what? The human being can be activated to levels beyond all of these minuscule uh, fears that we have. And, and so since I got that, I realized that I am aiming for going into a completely different direction off, off this kind of grid system where you're scared and thinking what, what it, you know, what they can do to you and all of that. I get that. I covered all that some years ago. I get it. But I also get something else. I also get the magnificence of this technology and the capabilities, the capabilities, what, what, what is absolutely possible. And those people, the system in place, like our government system, our, our um, corporations, our, um, uh, what do you call it? What do you call them again? Um, I was going to say free meat, secret society systems. Um, they're all these systems that are there that continue to ensure, do things to ensure that most human beings will be so distracted that they will not activate themselves. They will not activate themselves. They will not bypass the general cyclic default programs. And we will just hang out in it and then we exit. And then we just hang out in it and that's it, over and over and over, and then we exit. So. It's, it's a bigger picture, but the possibilities for a human being goes beyond being a human being. Okay, so in these two kind of brief monologues you've done, I think I've all come up with enough questions to probably take us through the rest of the show. So <laughs> like these brief monologues. <laughs> <laughs> you've done two brief monologues, and I'm like, all right, so... I'm just going to go sort of down the line and each one will give birth to another monologue, which will then create more questions. But so, okay. So the human, like, you know, all of the technology that is small, like the computer, like the phone, right? Like it seems to be modeled after human beings. Like they try and say, oh, your brain is like a computer. But no, it's really more like the computer is like your brain. Right. Computer is like the brain. And right. then we all these networks, all these like com computer networks, network of things, they work more like the cosmos, right? So right, right. Smaller versions of a big thing of that. The, 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 the devices are smaller versions of us on, and, and lesser. In both cases, the, the made up thing is lesser, right? And so people from that, just from that standpoint should have, should feel more powerful than they do, knowing that everything is a copy of them, right? Powerful. I just want to stick a pin in that powerful. Yeah. That's important. Power. Yeah. Full, meaning you like are a power plant, full of power, if you know it. So then I'm thinking also next, because we're talking about cycles and obviously what keeps track of cycles are clocks and time, which we've talked about. Like there are people who like collect watches. It's like a fetish for some people. There's like famous, famous watchmakers and clockmakers. And the ones that are super expensive or super sought after are the ones that keep track of the most amount of cycles simultaneously right? Like the ones that like do not just the, you know, the, the hour, the minute and the second, but also the day, the year, right. and they do it for other time zones. And sometimes they're tracking certain aspects of solar cycles. And sometimes they're tracking, you know, a variety of other things. And, and, and right, the higher end watches all have time related, mm -hmm. the most amount of dials, though, right, like many, many things that you can adjust. And so as we step into this ever expanding world of like multi -le multiple levels of networks and various kinds of technologies to integrate them like the more things that we are able to like keep track of but stand in our powerful place with it's like being the higher end watch the more things we can track instead of being overwhelmed by them just understand how they're working 
understand, right? So you can so you, and you can sort of choose at what point to sort of, you know, lo log into something, right? Just because it's, you know, noon right now doesn't mean you have to eat lunch, right? right. But you're sort of aware of these various cycles. Like when you talk about like this ever expanding awareness, right? Like it's almost like, you know, the more things, there's tons of this shit going on, whether we're talking about like 4G, 5G, whatever the fuck, different kinds of technologies being created on the personal device level, cryptocurrencies or whatever, right? And it's kind of like some days it feels overwhelming, like even trying to track the news, you're like, fuck, this shit is crazy. But other days, you're so good at keeping track of things that you're seeing connections between stuff and you're starting to make those kinds of connections that is called intelligence, Right. And so the more cycles you can keep track of at one time without sort of getting lost in one or another, in some ways, this is gaining expansiveness or awareness or intelligence. Yes. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. It's 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 uh, the simultaneous um, the simultaneity of it. Exactly. Exactly. Because it's like ob observing everything uh, without really necessarily observing any one specific it's without, like, committing, without committing exactly to you're aware you're aware of everything um at least anyway within your frame of reference that's that's going on because let's face it as we've talked about in in the same space i mean there's just like all these other uh realities these other realms that exist right in the space that we're in so there's all these layers but we're just talking about just the little space that we think we occupy um, and, and keeping track of that. And, and the watch to me, yes, it is fascinating because the part that is fascinating is if you really think about it, when the clock, um, uh, well, okay, especially watching a ticking clock, not the digital, but the ticking clock and the clock, the second hand, it just, hand, it just moves and it just moves. And you think about what is happening in it the it's not even a millisecond what's the word is it nano it, it it's like so much is happening before that second hand even moves do you know like 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 four lives yeah. yeah millions of years could be lived somewhere we don't know but it's it's how we are wired into our concept of time it is how time how concept how the concept of time has been delivered to us, when I say to us, to this particular version of the human experience, this human experience is based a lot on um, the way we calculate time, the way we totally. interpret time, you know, that that's the game here. It is a time-based game. Uh, and so everything, yes, is quantified here. We quantify everything. That's why we free yeah. out. I think this realm or whatever it is that we're in, this local nonsense that we're in, is completely controlled by time. There's probably other universes or other realms that are controlled by something else, right? And, and, and you know, or certainly different versions of time, but also probably somewhere time don't exist or or it means something different than it does does here. I wanted to ask you, since you know, like a lot of this came to you based on like observing puberty and menstrual cycles and whatnot. What about a person who, like, their cycle has always been fairly irregular? Would you consider this to be like a person who um, sort of naturally sort of questions that default? Like, could that could that be like an in, internal, even if they're unaware of it, sort of questioning of this default program? Or, or what do you think it is? I mean, obviously, we know that like they like to say it's a hormonal thing or this or that. Right, but your <laughs> hormones are linked to it's i mean man these are i mean there's so much to say or there's like so much to say that it does slow me down just because let me say this just because how my brain works um like i can't explain to people like how i can see uh i can see how things work i i, I cannot i don't know how else to explain to you so because of that I, I i'll see like every intricate detail of something but then I have to translate it into words that make sense. But um, in terms of even that, of course, yeah, they're still part of the cycle. They're still part of the network, but there could be, you're right, there could be other reasons. That's hard to predict, right? Like maybe they're, like for me, just in all these examples of myself, I've always had a fairly irregular cycle, right? Some weeks, it, some months it comes every three weeks, sometimes every five weeks. I didn't start it till a little bit later than most people. Now that may have been a factor of having been a gymnast and, and whatever, and the, the delayed puberty. 
right? But I, you know, I see someone like my sister is very different. Hers was always right on time, sort of whether she was on the pill or not. And yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was like that too. And, and look, I mean, you know, that look at me. So yeah, it was, you know, it's clockwork. So, but, um, th that's a whole other conversation too. But since you brought that up now, I have always told the, the couple of times, the one time that I actually did a major women's workshop, there's something to be said about also women who are totally, totally dislike it, dislike their cycles. There is definitely something to that. And that that's, that's something I realized and figured out um, a while back as well. So there is something to that as well that will also cause some disruption. Now, even though we are wired up to this thing that is default and, and, and counting us and keeping our cycles on track and, and all of that, we still um, need to realize that it is still default and that we really have the opportunity to take it um, steps further. So that piece is very kind of intricate. Now for me, I've always embraced it. For, for some reason, I came into this life and everything was fascinating to me. The, 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 the menstrual cycle, it was just, it was just fascinating. So I, it, it was, so I like, I was always like excited about it. I, I never had an issue. I was, it was just like, this is like so fascinating. So I never had an issue with it. It was just really interesting. I mean, now I think I understand more of that. Um, it, and I think maybe that also kept me from disliking it to the point where it actually made me more hooked yeah. up to it. Yeah. You know, so it was, it was a cycle. It was a thing. It was part of this thing. And as years went by, then I started to understand it more. I think both things can be true. I think there are people who are, who like, like what you said, they totally dislike it. And so they feel a sense of shame or hatred or whatever. And, and that can create a certain kind of disharmony. And then there's also women who are like really bothered by it. Like they don't necessarily hate, hate it, but they're very bothered by it. If it doesn't adhere to an absolutely normal schedule, they get very concerned. They get very worried, blah, blah, blah. They start doing things to try and regulate. The protocol. Right? Yeah. Collective yeah. protocol. That's why. Right. It's so, what you should be. And, and then, you know, for, then there's like, for me, like I would say that I was always just more kind of neutral. Like when it first happened, I was like, oh my God, what is this? Because, you know, like I grew up with my dad. And so this wasn't something that really was going on in the house. And I was kind right. of like stunned and when I say horrified not that I hated it but it was just like what what on earth is happening right 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 um, but then once it's sort of okay I get it what's going on I just was kind of neutral I didn't make a huge deal about right. having yeah. cramps or this and that it didn't stop me from doing what I needed to do it, it's you know whatever it is I've always been kind of neutral towards it right you know um but it is interesting that it, that sort of exists on both sides and this sort of um cultural obsession we have with counting it and regulating it and having apps that track it and having pills we take on certain days and different pills we take on other days and all this stuff. I, I find that fascinating. I well, don't yeah. do any of that, but that's fascinating. Well, I think we struggle to, without realizing it, we struggle to ensure that we are mm. operating, we are connected to the network, um, that we are operating um, as the cycles or, or as, yeah, as the system predicts, as the prescription is. So I, so I think all those things, yeah, you want to be um, every 28 days, you want to do these things because that means that you don't know that consciously, but what that's saying is you are aligned with the, um, you know, with the system, you are aligned with the, the network, you are aligned with the cycles. I mean, and then now we can go off course a little bit, but it's kind of like, what I've always said, when somebody is crazy or schizophrenic or whatever, you know, I, I have laughed about it. And I have said that basically what's happened is uh, somebody, somebody dropped their program and broke it. Uh, somebody got a crack in their program because we don't realize that the life we live and how we think and how we interpret reality, basically a lot of our interpretation of reality is simply just a program that we are wired to, right? And so when, and so, and so you, you have like this blueprint there, right? This, this, this hookup. And when somebody um, gets, seem to be what we call crazy or schizophrenic, it means that they have become somewhat unhooked 
<laughs> from the program. And nobody knows how to deal with that because they are now not responding according to the protocols that everybody's used to of the program. This is how you behave. This is how a sane person behaves. Well, actually, it's the program that we're running and, and, and the systems in place ensure that those programs are supported. Everything, the commercials, the this, the that, everything around us is constantly ensuring that everybody stays online. Everybody stays online with a particular program and version of reality. We do not know what to do with people who are who appear to have fallen off of the the program. We don't, you know, we don't know what to do. Yes, we do. And so we, you know, we have psychologists and all of that. But at the end of the day, they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. <laughs> they don't know what to do. At okay. the end of the day, that's what happens though. It's like, okay, well somebody, somebody is is their filter, their filter, that filter that we have there of normal that filters us from all of these other things that are going on, it's filtered. So we're just, you know, like this uh, tunnel vision. Yep. And then those people who are a little bit off, they don't know how to handle because there's no filter. So everything is coming at them. They don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. Well, the only, so I'm going to start with the most extreme form of this statement and black it up. The only difference- That you're crazy? Okay. Well, well that we, uh, uh, <laughs> almost as crazy as you, Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> to achieve that, right? The only real difference between a crazy person, a crazy schizophrenic person on the corner and Alex Jones is a bullhorn and an audience standing around listening. There you go. Right. So basically, like, you know, have you ever listened to some of the things that homeless like people who are talking to themselves in the corner say they say in all the they're saying all the same shit you and I are saying. They'll be talking about the universe. They'll be talking about all kinds of stuff. Right. But they're saying all the same shit we're saying, but we know that we're only supposed to say it in front of this box and out there to an audience, or we're supposed to say it when people pay us to say it, or we're supposed to say it when we're in a conversation back and forth. We know yeah. the boundaries, the restrictions. Or, or we know the context in which to have the conversation. But I'll right. tell you what. Some of the most brilliant shit that I've ever like thought of or even said on things. I like later I'll hear the fucking homeless person and I know they didn't watch my show because they don't watch shows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I'll hear them saying that kind of stuff and it's just they've lost the ability to know what the proper arena is for the conversation. Right. And it's a lot coming at them too, though. This is the problem too. Every though. second. It's, every it's second. just it's yeah. they, their filter is gone. So it's like their their brain is showing them all these multiple versions of reality while we are programmed to focus on one. What do you hear growing up? Focus on one thing at a time. <laughs> you do too many things. That is, right. So then, oh, well, you're just irresponsible. You can't do that many things. So we're like really programmed or parents program us that way as well. Well, isn't it interesting? So like I'll sometimes have a day where I just, I've made, I've looked so many things. I'm starting to make connections and, and I know they're real. But like my brain is starting to become overwhelmed by it. And so I know I have to shut down and go to the beach or do something yep. else because like, because otherwise, otherwise it will be that, right? Yeah. But think about the thing that's happened in our society. There's a couple of things that are revered. T tunnel vision, right? The ability to just focus on one thing at one time, which in some ways, like it's both revered and looked down upon because if somebody can only do one thing at a time, then they're not a good multitasker, which doesn't make them a good candidate for okay. jobs. So, so we have like some people, like the, in some ways we, 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 you know, lionize people who have tunnel vision, like athletes in other ways, it's like, Oh, happy having the ability to multitask is a good thing, but that doesn't make sense because when we were little, we were told to just do one thing at a time. Why are you now asking me to multitask? Right. But if you, you know, like you and I walk a fine line, we're tracking 10, 20, 30, 650 different things at one time. And there's a group of people that think we're brilliant. And then there's another group of people that are like, you two are fucking nuts. And you're going to be <laughs> And both are correct. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my final answer. Right. <laughs> yes. So it's a very, I mean, it like, you know, in, in, you know, indigenous cultures, those people are the, the shamans or the, the people who, you know, those are the, the most revered people in the tribe, not the ones that are left on the street corner to just, you know, rot or whatever. So it is an interesting, but literally our technologies that people are obsessed with are correlating all of these things that these people see, 
right? So when they correlate those things, they're crazy. But when the technology does it, that is fantastic. Do you have a little one I can take home, right? <laughs> yeah, because it because because it's one. It's not only is it controlled, but it is um, permitted. It is accepted, and we we're all about that. We are all about doing what is really socially accepted. And you can turn it on and turn it off. Oh, we can turn it on and turn it off because we like to feel that we have control. Control. So we, yeah. we feel like we have some sort of control, yet we really don't because then we are hooked to turning it on. I mean, as 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 brilliant as I may appear to be, my phone <laughs> calls to me when I'm sitting on the couch. I was like, I need to pick it up. Hold up. I'm like, what the hell am I looking for? I need to just check. What am I checking for? Oh, uh, I need to check. Does anybody test? <laughs> sometimes i'll be at, brunch, be at brunch with sonia or lunch or whatever nothing is her phone's not doing anything she feels the need to pick it up and i'm like sonia you're sitting having brunch with a brilliant woman what do you need to look at your phone and i'm just kidding <laughs> sure. oh my god it's, it's funny though it's funny because i'm aware of when i do that i'm like okay well let me see and then i put it down and then i'll find a reason i'm like I need to look something up. I always, then all of a sudden you always have something you need to look up. But I think to be aware of it, it's just funny because then you do have more of a choice to go, okay, all right, like a child. Okay, put it down, go put it over there and just sit down. Wait a minute, go put it over there and sit down and watch the TV. <laughs> all right. Let me get through a couple more of these questions. Well, there's a lot of questions here and they're all good. But uh, Laura here had a question. She wanted to know about what, like, there seems to be early activation going on now, like, especially with like the so many hormones in our food supply, like hormones in the milk, girls starting their cycle at eight sometimes now, right? Like, I, I remember like when I first moved to Texas, I couldn't believe how big the girls were there. Like, yeah. there would be like teenagers that like, just with these really full breasts, you know what I mean? Not like the right. Was like coming into some like 15 year olds with like full developed breasts and they're tall and they're big and it's like gee like it's weird yeah uh, that but you know sometimes that can just be from a certain kind of stock but other times that is an early activation and what do you think like is that um how like how does that affect the way a person ties into this overall sort of network and then the networks within the networks and all that kind of stuff when it happens so young? Um, well, I think, I think, you know, there's a lot of um, obviously genetic modification that's been going on for a while. So, so then there's basically, there's a lot of GMO people uh, and pretty much everybody in some way is, is breathing in some of that crazy stuff. But I think some of those things in terms of people who may be that just maybe part of their family um, or you know maybe in 10 years will they ask that same question but they won't associate it with you know our uh, grandma you know 50 years ago eating stuff that made her develop so so it's this weirdly weird thing in terms of um, how the genes are being affected how DNA is being rewritten uh, you know your your specific bloodline as, as that changes the, the DNA going into the future for people who are still going to have kids. Uh, there's so many different things that are going on. And I do believe, um, I, I have to use that word, believe, I can't think of another word right now, that we come in to the bloodline that we need. We come in to the families that are going to provide us with the, the genetics we need um, and the body type we need and the, the, um, the, the, the brain, you know, how the brain is going to work. I think we come in to fulfill those specific things. So even if, for example, you got adopted by somebody else, but then you came in through this, these other people, but you needed to because you, you needed that. If you're going to be here for a long time, okay, well, they've got strong bones and this and that. And, you know, there's, there's all these different things. So everybody is coming into uh, the body that they need for their journey in this moment, well, depending think, on what that is. I think adoption is an interesting test of like the epigenetic theory, because you see sometimes someone who was adopted, but they'll still take on certain yeah, but, yeah. of their, their adopted mother 
right kind of stuff. And so that's a perfect sort of test of that. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to, so I already have forgotten what I meant by one of these notes I wrote. You had mentioned something kind of early on about like, there's all, there's these various cycles and networks happening. And then you get a person who's like, like, I'm going to exit no more. And I see that like, right. Like I see that happening in a couple of ways right now in that there's some people who are just leaving the planet, right. We know a couple of people who've died during this period of time. Yeah. Right. Some of those people who died, it was surprising because they didn't seem like people who were afraid to engage the multi-layered, you know, crazy going on. But others are the type that are always like, I just want off this rock. And then another kind of exit is when they just completely give in to that sort of like uh, AI technological kind of thing where they're like, just not even like uh, concerned with trying to separate out the various program system cycles and stuff around they're just like being subsumed by the board i think both things are kind of like an entrance one dying in a way of people in different ways is that what you're saying not necessarily with the physical body necessarily but sometimes giving giving oneself over is yeah. that what you're saying there's an in there's an there's an exit that is in and an exit that is out right right, right. And both are kind of we're, i think we're seeing a lot of both of those things right now like i'm I've, I've seen some people who have been capable of amazing intellectual uh, feats in their life, just like give themselves over to like, well, I know I, I, I can, I understand the facts say that masks don't work, but I'm going to wear it just in case. And that just in case to me is like, that just doesn't make any sense. Well, because that's the truth though. That's what I'm saying. This moment is a truthful moment, whether people realize it or not. The truth of, of what our fears are, the truth of what our core beliefs are, um, it, it totally washes out all that topical um, intellectualizing um, dialogue that people have. A lot of things people say because it sounds good, but what is your truth deep down? What is your truth? And I think this is what's coming up now. And the people that do that, that they have um, a fear about it, it's, you know, it's because probably they may have some sort of propensity to a particular illness or disease or something. They might not know that, but there is a death code in there um, that they're wanting to run from or avoid. Uh, an expiration, the, the possibility of expiring. Uh, there's so many things that are going on in, in people. Their fear mainly of not existing anymore. That is the, I, I've said the human fear, the core human fear is non-existence. And of course, that's why death is marketed mm -hmm. as much as it is at this time. So interesting because there's a lot of people that I know that you know, that like didn't seem to be fearful of not existing when they weren't exercising, when they were eating ho-hos and ding-dongs and whatever. But that's something that they were doing to themselves. The moment there became the possibility of this like unidentifiable external threat to, to their existence, like it's a whole different game. So, so, okay, wait a second. Okay, all that spiritual stuff, that was cool. But now this is like, this is real. I could lose my body. I mean, it's pretty crazy. But, the you know, we hear the conscious community. There's just so much topical in stuff that we say. And, and, and that's the unveiling right now. That's the unmasking. It's a lot of these people that uh, just talk a good game. But it's like, here we are. Here we are. It's in your face now. Same thing. There was, there was somebody, there's somebody that I know, and I was shocked. This person is profound in, in, in what they say, the information that they share. And when I say somebody is profound in what they share, I truly mean that because I don't like just dish that out to anybody. Um, and so I was just kind of like shocked when that person was just like, you don't wear a mask? Oh no, I make sure. And I was just like, oh my goodness, what are you making sure of? Yeah. So that's the question. What do you make? What is your fear? What are you making sure of? And, and that means that the truth is that that person real, feels that they don't have any control and that something else is in charge of them and they need to be safe. They need to make sure that they are safe. They need to run. They need to hide. Um, and, 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 and yet people who are listening, just to be clear, we are not saying that if somebody 
is not um, vulnerable. Like if somebody has uh, autoimmune issues and they feel that they're vulnerable, because if you feel you're vulnerable, you yeah. need to protect yourself. Positive thinking will not work. You, unless this is your truth, and that, that's with anything across the board, unless it is your core truth, Though it positive thinking just does not work. You just set yourself up. So if you feel you need to protect yourself, then you need to do that. So I just want to be clear about that because people, there'll be people commenting, well, you know, about the mask. I, I don't care. You wear six masks. I was like, whatever you need to do, I think you need to just do that. That, that's what I say. No, no, I, I completely agree. I don't know if all people wear masks, but I think it's hilarious. Like it says on the box that it doesn't protect them. <laughs> so when people insist that they're wearing a mask to protect themselves from a virus, that to me, especially when this person is intelligent and can read, like that's nonsensical. Like, okay, like- Like a $2 mask will do all that. Well, there, there are things that masks will protect you from, the virus isn't one of them. And so like what you're said, if you're compromised in a variety of different ways, then wearing a mask could be beneficial, right? But be clear on that, that you're, you're you know what I mean? Be, like, yeah. be clear, right. And not run around in the fear because that's what a lot of people do. They drink the, the Kool-Aid of, of fear. They drink that just running around. It's like, like a chicken without its head. Um, and, and, I, and that's what we're trying to say uh, today in our conversation is, you know, tell the truth to yourself about what, what is your truth? What really is your truth? And, and there's so many people, you're right, who are just talking all these positive things, all these other intellectual dialogues. And then this moment came and, and then they became this, this whole other person. And the game, like I said, it, it is work. People don't want to do that degree of work. And that's why Fear sells so much, particularly in the supposed conscious community. That's why fear sells so much because people are more comfortable being afraid than to actually do the work of not being afraid. So they're not afraid. And the only way that that works for you to not be afraid is to know the truth of who you are and your power. It's not just positive thinking. It is the, the foundation upon which you stand of your knowing when you know more about who you are as an as an essence or a being that is greater than the physical body that's what that's the foundation that you're standing on and i think that's important for people to realize otherwise you gravitate to fear because you feel better we're we're more familiar with being afraid we're more familiar with the dangers as a child those are, are the first things we hear be careful that's dangerous don't do that um, fear, 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 you know, and that's the, we have a big programming. So we're constantly looking out for something that could hurt us. Uh, and you know, it doesn't matter how old we are. That program is very much there. And uh, babies, you see how babies respond. They don't pay attention. They'll walk off the, the, the edge of something because they don't, they don't know. So we do need this information, but we get programmed in such a way um, that we become afraid of everything, anything that threatens uh, our, th the existence of our bodies. Let's be clear, not us, not us. This is the other big mistake. I don't know if you wanna go into that in the second uh, hour, but that's the, next, that's the next thing. I don't like to use the word mistake because everything we do is the thing to do. But I think that again, and I cannot emphasize this enough, we have summarized the totality of who we are as this body. And so, you know, everything is identified as this body. It is the body that goes through the failing. It's not that which you are that is beyond that. That does not happen with that part of you, but the body. So if we can make that distinction, then we can get back in the driver's seat and drive the body and actually run it in a way like, like a piece of technology, because that's what it is, high level technology. How can you adjust this? How can we make the digestive system work? How can, you know, uh, in an optimal way, how can we get the immune system to work? You know, how can we get these systems, systems once again, in the body to work at its optimum level? Well, fear is not the way. Fear serves to shut those systems down even more. So it's, it's this domino effect and we, and people need to understand the domino effect of their fear. 
So, okay, so that is a good segue that brings us back to a question that I wanted to ask. And that was you know, the fear that people have of some of these quote unquote coming technologies. Some of them are already here. They've been with us for a long time. Like, I think one of the things people like, and including myself at times is like, by the time we're talking about them, it's already happening. Yeah. Like, and so like, we've already survived the onslaught of 5G, right? Mm -hmm. Like people are like talking about like, oh, the destruction that's gonna come because of this. I think it's probably been with us for at least for a long time. 10 years on the surface and, and longer underneath on a certain level, right? And, and so we've already sort of adapted and survived and on to the next thing. But it makes me think people are, you know, remember when like the big thing that people thought was coming in the future was flying cars and people are like, how will they control that? People will be running into each other and this and that, and blah, blah, blah. And they said, we'd have them by now, right? Well, we don't have them. Instead, what we have is like, the Uber, self-driving cars or cars that show up when you push a button on your phone and whatnot. So none of this stuff, just because like we hear that this might be coming. So first of all, most of what we hear might be coming is already here and we're fine on a certain level, right? Yeah, it might be in a different version of reality. I mean, you know, those, those are going way out, more way out, but honest to God, this is not the only game in town. The version of reality that we're running does not mean that that's the only version that is there. Uh, but I know, but in keeping it in the context of, you know, what we think that we're working with, um, you're absolutely right on that. And things are rolled out at different times. Um, and so we need to just be where we are right now, as opposed to worrying about uh, what's going to come. Because guess what? If you're here, you're going to work with it. You're going to deal with it. That's what we do. I don't care how many things we complain about. We still end up working with it. We end up having to adapt. That's what we do as human beings. We are designed to adapt. And that's why we're still here because we have been adapting for millions of years. And this is the version that's, that's before us right now from all of that adaptation. Speaking of what you just said about there's all these you know multiple realities that have other things going on and whatnot. Have you caught that story that like keeps popping in over the last five or six weeks about them them seeing people flying jetpacks near LAX? No, I didn't. Okay, so remember back in the 80s when that was like, they thought that was- Oh, like, it was huge. They thought it was going to happen, yeah. yeah. So, okay, there's been this repetitive story that keeps making, like it's, it, it's different, you know, like different occurrences, but on, I've seen it on the front page of Drudge number of, time, number of times about mm -hmm. at LAX, the, uh, Pilots are saying that when they're coming in for a landing, they're seeing people flying jetpacks, right? And I'm like, oh, that's kind of like an interesting, so like either some people are just out there fooling around having a good time and, and because it's not an approved of technology or something, people are very bothered. Now they're trying to say it couldn't be, they must be mistaken. Right, right. That's what they do. In my head, what this is, is some bleed over from one of the other of these realities where that did become the future. We talked about it, right. it happened here, it happened somewhere else. And there's bleed over, like, you know, the cat sees the bleed over in the living room all the time, right? A, a whoops moment, like, oops, oh, I think I uh, landed back in uh, the wrong version. <laughs> but what? yeah, I, absolutely. I, I, because everything is happening. Everything, Every, happens. everything is happening. It's just maybe not the version of reality you're participating in. But, you know, it, it, and again, for p people that, that continue to say that, that, you know, the past, present, and the future exist simultaneously. Why don't you use that, we, you know, when in other times? I don't, I don't get that. How come we will say that, but then it doesn't apply to this? That means any and everything. The past, present, and the future exists all at the same time. It means any and everything is happening right now, like anything. You might not be experiencing those certain things. I might not, but it doesn't mean they're not happening. And we all experience this right? We all experience these moments. Again, washing the dishes, sitting on the couch. You know, I, I, I have them all the time where I, I swear I felt like I was in the car driving and then all of a sudden I, I have a flash. Now I'm on the couch. You know, where am I? So this is not a static reality by any means. It's just whatever we're focused on is the thing that we think is the final experience and version of that moment but we are just all over the place all the time and i think all those things when we can really come into the more we can come to grips with the fact that it's okay 
We don't have to have a structured, ordered version of reality. That's just a safe way out. It just makes us feel better to think that there is a spe just a specific way to reality and there is no other way other than this way and all the science that's directing us in down this particular path. No, it's just what makes you feel comfortable because we need to feel like we're in control and that allows us to feel in control. But the fact of the matter is we don't know where we're at. We're like all over the place. I mean, you know, it's, just, it's the truth. It's like we're, we're, we're all over the place in, all the time. And it's okay for people out there listening. I just want to tell them when you have these experiences, it's okay. Even if you don't tell anybody, you don't have to think you're crazy. It, it, it's okay. Cause I'm having them too. Okay. So I'm crazy and Emily's crazy, but that's not the point. <laughs> the point is we're having these experiences and the more we own them is the more those filters come off and we get to see more. We don't know where we are. Everything we think we know about where we are is based on something that somebody told us, right? It's like, when. I, mm -hmm. had, I had this uh, conversation with Robert Phoenix a few weeks ago and he's like, you know, there's a theory that we actually don't, we actually really live on Mars and not on Earth. I was like, oh, well then that, now I understand why I get something from Groupon in the email every week asking if I want to buy an acre of land on Mars. <laughs> Once the Great Reset happens, how you acquire property, you're going to buy an acre of land on Mars through Groupon, right? <laughs> oh, gosh, this is too damn funny. It's so, we're so funny and ridiculous. I mean, how can you not come here for this Disneyland, you know? This stuff is really crazy. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just all over the place. We're all over the place. And, and you know, me, I'm good with it. I, I came to that realization a while back, and so... Yeah, I'm good with it. I just like the more good with it you are is the more you get to see is the more your brain stops filtering uh, reality for you because you're okay. You know that you're okay, no matter what, you're okay. That's the part that people have to get that they're okay, no matter what, you're okay. So you don't have to get locked in on some safe interpretation and version of reality you can only get there when the fear gets boring right at a certain point like because the fear is exciting at first like when you first discover oh, yeah. the and all that and eventually the fear gets boring and then you move past it okay i think i want to hit on I, I have two more things i have lots of things on the list but we're not going to have time for all of them in this first segment so i'm going to hit on two and then i'm going to kind of wrap it up with uh, with the thought that i've had but the first one I was going to say is all of these things that people are fearful of, like what we were talking about, about, you know, these systems and these technologies that governments or secret societies or tech companies or whatever are throwing at us. The funny thing is, is the main thing that all of those kinds of groups of people still use on the people is mostly language spells and symbol magic, sigil magic or symbol signs and symbols like that is really like still right? With all these supposed advanced, supposed advancements in technology, and, and there are advancements in technology, the thing that still seems to hold the most power over the people are the language spells and the signs and symbols, right? And some of these symbols, like, if, if, like I've been thinking a lot lately about how much time is wasted fighting over whether a symbol is good or bad, right? Like, right? And therefore, nobody ever understands how it works. And there's a reason why they use these symbols, Right, it's like uh, a timeless technology for sure. Right, it's a timeless technology that adapts to all of these different cycles and systems that you're talking about. Like it's a, it's a portal of sorts, right? And so, like you know, for, particularly when we're talking about like secret societies, and now you could say the same things with corporations that do all sorts of stuff with symbols, right? But people will you know avoid any information that comes from something with the Templars cross or, or whatever because the Freemasons or the Templars are bad or other people think they're good. Meanwhile, there's this symbol that's been with them through all their iterations over time that is that means something, that is doing something, and people don't actually know what that is, right? And therefore, all this other stuff is able to be have this certain level of imaginary power over people, right? Like it's not, so do you, do you have any, any, any kind of thoughts on that? Well, the, the thing that I also want to say is um, with the symbols to uh, good or bad, I think it, it is about what resonates. If we can get away from good or bad mm -hmm. and, and get to more, because it is about resonance, what, what resonates. Now, 
if if we were saying, oh, this person is bad and they just resonate to that bad, they, they're going towards that bad thing. Yeah, it's because that's the resonance. They are sharing a common field. So it, you just have to look at what is what am I resonating with in terms of this? Well, sure, symbols can be encoded with an endless, like you just said, there's sort of this endless a uh, series of data of all kinds of different kinds of information, um, you know, it, it can have all of that. So it can, it can last throughout ages. It could possibly, like you, you were saying, Emily, uh, morph into other things, change like, like a portal. Well, every word, every thought, every whatever, they're all portals. You know, it, it, all this data, it's just spinning out. We are, we are just, again, we are, we are a stream of information. Everything. We are, Every, no, I was just going to say, you know, again, I, I, I've said that over and over, over. We are a language. Everything is a language. We are a language. I like to throw this out just to throw some people off. Um, you know, is somebody speaking us? You know, um, what, you know, are we being spoken? Or, you know, are we, or what is a language? So there are all of these things that we have to look at. But at the end of the day, all we're dealing with is streams of information. Everything you can think of ha is is just some sort of information that that takes form in some particular kind of pattern. So all of these things, whether they be symbols, signs, technologies, vibrations, words, they open up a geometry that is a portal that allows you to start in one place and through your experience with it move to another. Which takes us to kind of the last point is that you had some interesting stuff in your article about the DNA as portals, right? And, and this sort of like, you know, as sort of time travel device, right? And this kind of goes to, you even mentioned it a little bit earlier, like your elites or your bloodlines or information past, but these things can also be altered with the epigenetics and stuff that we talked about. And then you just said now that like, you know, everything is, right? Words are a portal, the symbols, the sigils and stuff like that are portals. The more, chaos right because you were saying oh people just want something orderly but you're like eh, and nah, that chaos is good but i think that like yeah, chaos is order sometimes so <laughs> in, the best, in the best possible way like you figured out how to be like a chaos magician and to me when there's all of this chaos and you know there's something beautiful about moments of harmony right and we wouldn't know that there was something amazing about them if they right. did in every moment we'd be bored it's mm -hmm. like get bored with fear we get bored with with pleasure and all of right. that kind of stuff and all of this chaos when there's more chaos there's more portals there's more places to go there's more things to happen there's more things to see and right? there's more opportunities that's for darn sure and yeah. i think again perception is key perception is the name of the game boy because if if, if you can um you have a different interpretation or you change your perception uh, then you can actually access, like you're saying, portal. you can access other possibilities in the chaos. It means that a whole lot is open up to you and you have access to more. Not that you never did before, but in this particular um, energy, this particular moment, it's like, it's all kind of there. Where do you want to go? Well, if, if you're only leaning towards a direction of fear all the time, then you are going to resonate. You're going to be drawn to things that will support the fear. But if you realize, wow, okay, since I've been in the house or since this has all happened, man, I really learned a lot about myself. Okay, what are the things that I learned about myself? Wow, I see that there's some things I'm going to change. Wow, I, I, I wrote, I started writing 10 chapters for that book that I was thinking about writing. Some things got revealed to me about the universe. I mean, if we start to pull those things, we start to see that actually we are being given that opportunity. Nature is saying, have at it. There's chaos right now, but you have some choices here. And this is the, this is the separation of the wheat from the chaff. The chaff. Now, you're, you're either going to, some are going to go in that direction of curiosity and adventure, imagination, because that's what creation is. Creation is all about the imagination and just expressing and experiencing. And then there's a group that's on the safe level that they just want the um, nature to, to take them on the, the uh, automated ride through all of this. That's fine. But there's a grand opportunity for those who want it. And even though it's always available, 
there is to some degree door closings, not that they're closed. I want to make sure I've explained that. Not that things are just closed off from you and you can't get back in, but it's just the particular energy right now of these moments in time that are more accessible to a human being because there is a necessary shift that nature wants to have happen. It is again, uh, a series of cycles for our version of reality. And we are up like up for graduation. It's like, you're up to bat right now. And all of this is open to you for those who wanna go ahead and ride like a surfer, get on that wave and access these things because they're easier to access right now. If you can see that, there's a lot that can happen for you where 2021, when that cycle rolls around, you are entering that cycle in a different way. Yeah. So there's all these beautiful options and opportunities. We just have to, you know, not that we don't get irritated still with, with certain things uh, when you go out there. I'm not saying that we don't. Not the irritation with certain things in the second. <laughs> but no, you're right. Reality is up for grabs in a way right now. That not that it's never happened before or won't ever happen again, but we haven't seen it this way in our lifetimes and it will be a while again before we do. In a and lot of lifetimes. This is a major moment. I think what you're, you know, like saying is if you slide into 2021 without sort of grabbing and pulling towards you that portal with which you want to enter, you know, we're all going to, whether you take the, take the jump or you don't look back and say hindsight was 2020, everything mm -hmm. shifted there, right? And people either, you know, sort of staked their own path, like claimed their own path that they were going to go, or they, they just- They went automation. They went to the automated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay, I think that's a good place to wrap up the first segment here. Tell people uh, what your current offerings are and where they can find you. Again, coordinates. I am still trying to locate me. So if anybody out there finds me, let me know. <laughs> we'll let them figure it out on their own. <laughs> oh my gosh. My website is the real And I, you know, I still have, I have uh, reality Wednesday, which is the free monthly teleconference. Uh, that everybody is welcome to come and enjoy and our expansion portal where we talk about all kinds of uh, outrageously edgy things that's for members on the website and my radio show the expansion zone um on mondays on kpfk 90.7 fm all of that information is on the website at the real and i know there's other things there uh, that i can't think of it right this minute but you go to the website the real subscribe to the newsletter and, and so on. And we will link to the article in the description that this, that this sort of conversation got its uh, jumping off point from. And we will see everybody on the other side, www.patreon.com forward slash off planet media. We'll see you there. Bye.